Psalms 107, verse 40. Praise God. Good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Boy, I'll tell them about you, but I've enjoyed the presence of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord tonight. And I tell you, boy, we should have been shouting tonight. I can remember when I was growing up, when I first got saved, I'll tell you what, church, we sang songs like that, and the whole church would be rocking. Amen? But I don't know anymore. We just seem like we don't want to rock anymore. I tell you. Okay. Uh, when I was down drinking in the bars and stuff, I'm glad I don't do that no more. Amen. But I tell you, I went to have a good time. The same way with the church, we should have, we should come to church have a good time. But I'm not talking about just getting in the place. But I'm talking about getting in the Spirit of God and enjoying the presence of the Lord. It's our strength. Amen. And I tell you, church, I, I like to get into church. Praise God. And worship and praise the dear. Praise God. I'm going to preach on tonight. There is no way. There is no way. And to look into Psalms 107, beginning at verse 40. He said, He poureth contempt upon the princes and causeth them to wander in the wilderness. For there is no way. Yet he said, He, uh, the poor, will hide from affliction and make him families like a flock. The righteous will see it and rejoice. In all iniquity shall stop her mouth. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. Yes. Praise God. I tell you, that don't get you excited, nothing will, amen. Now, like what the psalmist said, there, there, there is no way. And church, let me tell you, the Bible tells us in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, my people are destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. I thank God, God gave us the Holy Spirit to give us His Word, amen, that we can have knowledge and, and that we won't be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. And I was thinking, maybe the one church I believe a lot of you know, Christians give the, amen, give the devil advantages over them because church, they don't understand the good things that God has given us. Now I begin to think about this. We said there is no way yet, the Bible says, that the, the righteous shall rejoice Amen. We have a right to rejoice tonight. But I begin to think about, you know, we live in a time right now that they say that there are so many ways, amen, that we can get to heaven. They say that, you know, that, that uh, you, you can, you can uh, they try to work their way in. They try to buy their way in. But I'm here to tell you this tonight, church, there's only one way. And there's no other way that we can get to heaven except through Jesus Christ. I don't know why people cannot get the translate into their mind, but they try everything in the world. The church, Jesus made it plainly before he left. He said, there's no other way to the Father except by me. He is the way, and he is the truth, and he is alive. And I thank God for that tonight, church. And we should just preach it as plain as we can and let the world know and let our neighbors know, let our friends know, amen, that Jesus is the only way to heaven amen. and he's the only way to our blessed church. We are blessed tonight. I mean, the Bible says that we live in, in heavenly places. And church, we ought to enjoy everything that God gives us and all the blessings and all the good things, church. Amen. Because church, there's a lot of people, people out there is looking and hungry and wanting something to think that we've got tonight. Thank God, church, we can, we've got the blessing tonight that we can lay down at night and go to sleep and not have to worry about who we're going to wake up tomorrow. I thank God for that tonight, church. But a lot of people, amen, think that there, there are many ways to Jesus, church. There is no other way. Thank God. He said there's no way. And I thank God tonight, church, that we'll just grab a hold of Jesus and amen, and, and live for Jesus, so let Jesus live in us. And like I said this morning, there, it takes Jesus to change us. If Jesus is not in us, uh, he can't change us. Now, thank God when I come to an old-fashioned altar. How many can remember when they come to an old-fashioned altar? And I, you know what, church, I got up? I felt, I felt all the way to sin lead me, glory to God. And I'll tell you, I was a different person, and I've never been the same since. But church, a lot of people, church, they come just to, at the altar, just to come to soothe their conscience. But church, if you come to the altar and just give yourself to Jesus Christ and, and let that blood cleanse us, glory to God, I'm here to tell you, you won't be the same. And that's the trouble with the world of churches today. They don't realize what Jesus can do for them if they'll just let Jesus in. 
Bible says that we're new creatures in Jesus. And I thank God I'm a new creature this tonight. I thank God He saved me. He changed me. It turns back to that one sister saying, like I said this morning, I don't go to the same places anymore. You know why? Because Jesus does something in me. How about you? I'll give them on the head clap, sir. Oh, thank God. He's all the way to Jesus. Amen. Lord, what is it that we got to accept him? This is what the Bible said. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, beginning at verse 4, Jesus said, or Timothy said, Who will have all men to be saved? Now, God wants everybody to be saved. There, I know there's some people believe today that God made so many people to die and go to hell and so many people to live and go to heaven. Church, I'm here to tell you, Jesus died for the whole world. That's what the Bible said. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It's God's good pleasure tonight to give everybody eternal life. And church, I'm here to tell you, we should tell a lost and dying world. And church, I don't believe we, as God's people, we're not telling they did, uh, the people that Jesus died for all mankind. And he didn't die just to save a few. He, he died to save the whole world. And church, we've got something tonight that we need to share the world with, and that is Jesus Christ. And Timothy said, who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator. I thank God tonight, church, I don't have to go to some hope tonight and have him to try to please me. Because there's no hope that please me. He can pray to he turn blue in the face. And then he'll never save me. And he'll never wash my sins away. There's only one hope that I need. And that is Jesus. And he's the only one that shed the blood over to God. That you and I can be saved tonight. There's no other way, praise God, that we can get to heaven except Jesus Christ. And church, we should be preaching that and teaching that. And then if there's no seven ways or whatever to heaven, there's only one way. And that's Jesus Christ, and He's the only mediator. He's the only high priest. He's the only one that can take us to heaven. And just like that song said a while ago, I'm looking, Amen. For, I'm not looking for the undertaker. I'm looking for the upper taker. And just one day that song says that. Uh, the heavens will have cut down. And that new Jerusalem, we're going to be part of it. I thank God, church, I can get excited every time we sing that song about new Jerusalem because yeah. I can see myself in that yeah. city. Yeah. I said, I can see myself yeah. in that yeah. city. Yeah. 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 With all my love on and being with Jesus, church, we ought to get excited, man. Let's recognize that Jesus is a mediator and he's the only person that can get us to heaven. There's no other way, church, and we should tell the lost and dying world that is the way. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. The Bible says, You gave himself a ransom for all. Neither did he send for salvation than in, but in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, praise God. I thank God tonight for that. Amen. Now, church, there's no other way. I'd like to keep it simple tonight. Amen. Because you know what, church? There's no other way to heaven except Jesus. And there is no other way that we can defeat the devil. Now, I know the Bible said Jesus gave us power over all of the enemy. And church, we tell you, we need to take that seriously tonight. The church is not what, what we're missing is that the Bible says to put on the whole armor of God. You know, the church, we can't defeat the devil, glory to God, unless we got the word in us. Amen. And church, let me tell you, we have Christian people today that they tell them to take that Bible and open it up and study it and learn about God and know who God is. And that God is a good God. He's an awesome God. And church, the Bible says that we'll clothe ourselves in the armor of God and through the word of God. He said we can fight all the wiles of the devil. And church, I'm here to tell you, the devil comes at us in so many amen, things. See, the Bible tells us that when Jesus went to the wilderness, the Bible says the devil come to him three times. And all three times Jesus had, amen, to use the word of God. Church, let me tell you something. We don't live by bread alone, but we live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And church, let me tell you, that's why God gave us preachers and, and apostles and teachers and pastors. Today. But he gave us the word of God that we can armor ourselves. That when the devil comes at us, praise God, we can come against him and say it's written. And we can quote the scriptures, glory to God, and he has to back off. The devil, the Bible says, Jesus, that, that the devil loved Jesus out for a season. He'll leave you 
first season if you got the word that you can find against him. But church, a lot of people don't don't read it. If they don't study God's word, they don't have it in their hearts and in their spirits. And when the devil comes, they can't fight the devil. We gotta go by God's word. He says, I'll give you power over all the enemy. You know what he means? He means it's right here. He said, I give you power over all the enemy. He meant he's going to give us the word, praise God, and we can stand upon the word of God and we can rebuke him in the name and by the word of God and the devil will have to flee. I said the devil will have to flee. But church, we've got to put this word into our spirit and into our heart and we've got to study it. Amen. That we can come against the devil. I like what Psalmist said. He said, I got the two-edged sword in my hand and praise God and I got a praise on my lips. And that's what we need, church. We need to have the word of God in our hand and a praise, praise God. And when the devil comes, we can shout amen right in front of him. Let him know God, that God gave us something that we can defeat the devil with. I'll oh, give the Lord a hand. We as pastors and ministers, we need to preach. Amen. You need to open up your Bible. Have a time to study. Have a time to get along with God. And begin to read. You say, Pastor Maggard, I don't understand it. I read it, but I just can't understand it. I'm here to tell you, you don't have to understand all of it until the Holy Spirit prays God. He will show you and teach you Amen. when you need it. I said he'll show the Holy Spirit will show you. Amen. Bring it to you if you got it in you. Amen. I'll give it on the head clap. See, we try. We, we listen to God. What Jesus said, I'll give you power over all the enemies. And church, he's done that. He said, I want you to arm yourself. Ephesians chapter 6 tells us that. Verse 10 to 11. He said, I said, like I said this morning, glory to God. He said, Father, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his mind. Yeah. Glory to God. And the Bible says, Jesus said to the Pharisee, he said, you do err because you know not the scripture nor the power of God. That's a trouble right here with a lot of Christians. The, the, the devil's defeating them and putting the, they've been taking all their joy, taking all their peace. Is why they call they don't know the power of God and they don't know the scripture. Right. Church and we as God's people, we need to get in and study God's word. But Brother Maggard, I like to read. I like to read Joe Austin. And I like to go to Bowers. That's good. But it doesn't take the place for the Word of God. Because this Word is anointed by God. And church, it's, it's a spirit and it's a light. And I don't believe Joe Austin and Doris Myers and all the others. They don't have that kind of Lord that God gave this Word. I'll give the Lord a hand clap, church. We can't do it, church. We can't do it. Oh, I'll tell you, I love the Word of God. Yes. I get in the Word of God every day. That's, that's, that, I, I'm all going to You are too. The Bible says to so study yourself that you, you approve of God. Glory to God. Now, the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. But Brother Michael, if you just told me what to go to Jesus, I'll give you power over all the enemies. That's what he's saying there. Amen. We've got to put two and two, two, two together. Yes. Or you listen to what I'm saying, church. Oh, I thank God for the word tonight. You can't do it. That's what the psalmist is talking about right there. And we need to keep that in mind. There is no way that you can get to heaven without Jesus. There's no way that you can overcome the devil. Amen. And the wiles of the devil. The Bible tells us, he said, he, he, he throws foreign darts at us. But the Bible said that we can take the shield of faith. What is the shield of faith? It's the word of God. And can push all the foreign darts of the wicked. But now, church, if you want to get real spiritual. See, a lot of people don't want to get real spiritual. It's because church, it's a price that you got to pay. Everybody wants to cast out devils. And everybody wants, amen, to, to heal the blind. And a lot of people want to, amen, to heal people that's in the wheelchair and everything. But truth be told, so, it takes work to do this. I said it takes work to do this. It takes dedication to do this. It takes commitment to do this. Where 
what you're trying to say, Brother Myers? The Bible says that we want to heal. The Bible tells us that the, the, that Jesus, that the ability to come to Jesus. And they, they, they come to the disciples. And they try to heal this man. But the Bible said the disciples couldn't heal this man. And but Jesus was taken to do a farther step. Now, church, I'm here to tell you, if you want to do some great things for God, you got to push that plate away. I know you don't like to hear that. I can tell by looking at a lot of us that we don't pull the, push that plate away. But the Bible said this coming by fasting and prayer. If you want to cast out devils, I said if you want to cast out devils and heal the blind, glory to God, you're going to have to fast and pray. For the Bible said this coming to death by fasting and praying. Yeah. And church, but people don't want to hear that. And church, if you want to, if you want to come against the devil, I'm talking about real spiritual. I'm talking about coming against the principalities and the powers. You're going to have to push that plate away and just pray and seek God. And church, I'm here to tell you, I believe you can cause your loved ones to be saved. And you can come against amen, the devil and all the principalities and powers by fasting and praying. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen. But that's not all of it. Now the disciples couldn't do that because, see, Jesus hadn't went away yet. Right. Jesus was doing all this, but he was teaching his disciples after he leaves and after he sent back the Holy Ghost. And I'm talking about speaking in tongues as the Spirit gives you the utterance. Yeah. Are you missing what I'm saying? Then, in church, we've got the anointing and we've got the power and we put the we put fasting and praying on top of it. And you talk about the nine spiritual gifts and you talk about the breaking the yoke of the devil and all the things that they throw upon you and all your people and everything, your loved ones. I'm here to tell you, you can do it. All you've got to do is be willing to pay the price and do what God tells us. Church, I'm here to tell you, we're living way below our privilege. And I thank God this church is praying and fasting. But church, God has given me a spirit, amen, the last few months uh, that we as God's people, we need to get filled up with the Holy Ghost uh, and get dedicated to God and start doing the work for God. But you'll never do it unless you've got the anointing of God up on your life. I'll give the Lord a hand to the church. We say that. They sing that song a lot of times. Oh, I want to be like Jesus. Have you heard that song, I want to be like Jesus? I want everybody to see Jesus in me. Well, I'm here to tell you, get filled up with the Holy Ghost, speak in tongues, as the Spirit gives you the utterance. You'll be like Jesus. You know why? Because God will put anointing up on you just like He did Jesus. Can I say that again? God will put anointing up on you just like He did His Son, Jesus. And church, we are sons and daughters of God, and God just wants to pour, amen, pour the anointing upon us, but we don't want to receive it. If you read Acts chapter 10, verse 30, he'll tell you that the Father anointed Jesus Christ, amen, with power and the Holy Ghost. And he went about doing good, healing all those that were pressed. Acts chapter 10, verse 30 will tell you, amen, if you want to be like Jesus and have God's anointing upon you, oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Just say, God, I feel me. God, just feel me. And the Bible says in the book of Luke, he'll give you all the Holy Ghost that you need. And I hear an amen. Glory amen. to God. I just know that ain't for good measure. Glory to God. But let's go back to fasting and praying. Isaiah 58 verse 6 says, Isaiah 58 6, Is not this the fast that I have chosen? This is God. The reason God does this, because are you tired? Amen. The devil taking your children. Are you tired of seeing all the weakness around and everything? If you want us, we as God's people get tired of all this, I believe we'll start doing something about it. So this is what God says. Is not this the fact that I have chosen to loose the bands of the wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the press go free, and that you break every yoke? Church, this is a promise of God. So church, if we get filled up with the Holy Spirit and start passing and praying, you talk about God moving and right. God has no choice but do it because He will honor His Word. Oh, praise God. I love that. Now the Bible says in Matthew chapter 17, verse 15, I will get back to the, the, the lunatic. I mean, that man was possessed with the devil. Matthew chapter 17, verse 15. 
Lord, have mercy upon my son, said the father, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed awful times falling into the fire and offered into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples. How many times God has brought people, amen, to the church services and we couldn't do nothing about them. The church, he was talking there, and we should look at it tonight. God, how many times God has sent people to the church, and we as a church could not, amen, do the miracle that needed to be done, amen, because we wasn't willing to pay the price like the disciples. The reason why the wonders and why the disciples couldn't do it, because Jesus was still there, and therefore they didn't they didn't have that kind of anointing. But Jesus said, Hey, well, go away and give you the Holy Ghost, and then he said, You can fast and pray, and then you can do this thing, is Amen. what Jesus was saying. That's what he said there in verse 18. And Jesus, he didn't rebuke the disciples. He said, and he rebuked the devil. And he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples and, and Jesus, to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? Verse uh, Matthew 17, 21 says, How be it this kind goeth not but out but by praying and fasting. Church, if you want to do some great defeats, do some great things for God. We need to line ourselves up with the Word of God. Amen. Amen. And I'll tell you, this church right here, this little church can be a powerhouse. This little church, amen, God could use every one of us. You can start a revival. A revival is to start with one person. Or you listen to what I'm saying. Amen. But could you imagine, the Bible said that there were 12 people. And, and the, the Holy Ghost was up on them, glory to God. And the Bible said they turned the world upside down. Church, we've got enough people in this church that we get filled up with the Holy Ghost. We can turn this community upside down. And you talk about a revival. You talk about something happened. It could happen. Don't underestimate a little church because those 12 disciples yes. were sent out and they turned the world upside down because they become apostles. Yes. Oh, give them all the hands. I thank God tonight. That's what it's all about. Amen. That we can do a work for God. I won't go back. I won't read this one more time. There is no way. He poured one, Psalm 107, verse 40. He poured contempt upon, upon the princes and causes them to wander in the wilderness for there is no way. See, when we come to a place, amen, that we forget about God and try to go our way, and that's what happens, church. we got to lean upon God. Amen. And it says, Yet said he, the, he the poor on high from afflictions, and maketh him families like a flock. The righteous shall see and rejoice. Oh, what a time that will be, church. Yes, hallelujah. But there is no way we can do it without God's way. And church, I believe... I believe God was at this church, as well as those I'm preaching to, out in faithful stuff, that you need to get down business with God. If you want to see your family saved, if you want to see our country change, if you want to see your church change, you need to get down and get in God's Word and get, uh, get dedicated and begin to get in the Holy Spirit. Yes. Church, I'm going to tell you, the churches today are dying. Amen. Because the Bible says, with the Spirit, with the no Spirit, the body dies. We need to get back like we used to with churches were filled with God's Word and full of God's Holy Spirit and things were happening. Church, we got so we got so far away from these things. We moved uptown and got, what do you call that? Sophisticated. 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 We don't need God. We don't need Jesus. And we don't need the Word. We don't need the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And church, believe me, a lot of churches today are doing this. And they're telling the pastors and preachers what to preach. That's what we're living in today. Amen. There's no way that God can bless us. Nope. We're lifting up the righteous unless we get God's way. Would you stand tonight?